we see, don't we, all that we experience is understandable as a spectrum of vibrations. There are different kinds of spectra. There's the spectrum of light, there's light, the spectrum of sound. We can also think of spectra of smells, of tactile feelings, of emotions, and so on, all down the line. We are, as it were, living in the midst of a woven tapestry. And so on, all down the line. We are, as it were, living in the midst of a woven tapestry. Peace, peace. This is DJ Olo coming to you live from Radio Fairfax and Fairfax VA. Be nice if I can get this mic up here, huh? That's, I forgot to even pull this mic up, man. I got a few guests in the house. Got my cousin, my little cousin. Can I say your name? Yama. What's good, G? <laughs> just chilling, man. Just coming out here to support you. Thanks for coming through, man. See what you're, what you're up to these days. We got Miss CC Vibes next to you. What's going on, Olo? How Peace. you doing? What's going on, Miss CC? And we got Jamal Bracy, man. I haven't seen you in a minute either, man. Yeah, man. Just been busy. It's been Keep too it long. Going. Um, today we're talking about collaborative commerce. Anybody want to tell us what that means? Or what, is it, what does it mean to you? Anybody want to spark it? It means that we got to work with our community. We have to work in our means to have our company, the company that you own, distribute to the public on more of their level other than... Uh, a marketing base level like well that's good all right cool yeah, all right yeah, yeah. so i'm gonna start with an example okay this is when i brought up in the car when i was with my cousin okay uh we all need homes right we need somewhere to stay whether it's an apartment or a house or a townhouse or whatever and somebody has to build that living space right so when it comes to home building you need somebody to come do the... You need someone to do the foundation. Let's start from the beginning. Someone to do foundation. That's concrete work. You need someone to come out and do the framing for your house, right? That's a lot of carpentry. Then you need... After framing, you need to do wiring. You got to do insulation. You got to do plumbing. You got to do drywall once all that's done. You got so much stuff to do. You got to put in windows, you know. So back in the day, the thought was, well, if you if your company can hire all these people, if you can hire a plumber... An electrician, a carpenter, um, a guy that does uh, tiles, a guy that does windows, a guy that does uh, doors. You know what I'm saying? If you have all these people, then your company is good because you don't have to go out to another source, right? You don't have to outsource. You have everybody. And your company, if somebody calls you and says, I want to build a house, you have everybody in place, right? But then the problem was that you're paying these people a salary and you're paying them even when they're not working. So if your company doesn't get any work, mm -hmm. you're still paying your electrician to stay on staff, right? To just be a part of the staff. And so you're actually losing money. That's a liability because now you're losing money. There's no work for him and you're still paying him. So the new way of thinking, now with the internet, since everything's changing, the new way of thinking is, all right, so I have a company and all I do is plumbing. And all he does is electricity. He's an electrician. And all you do is interior design. Mm -hmm. And all he does is whatever, tiles, right? Mm -hmm. If we all work together, we're all making money and we're all working progressively because now there's no downtime. So if you get a job, you're going to need me for something. Mm -hmm. If I get a job, I'm going to need him for something. If he needs a job, he needs him. So it's collaborative. And that's, that's come about because of the internet, because it makes it so easy. So today I want to explore the topic I want to talk a little bit about the music industry, the arts. I want to talk about um, living off grid. That's that's where it's going to. I think that collaborative commerce is going to um, to that point, living off grid and being self sufficient in small communities, where like you were saying before, you don't need a, a major enterprise. You know what I'm saying? So um, let me take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. This is on beat with Olo, talking about collaborative commerce. Peace. Keeping the First Amendment alive. Fairfax Cable and Internet Radio. WEDR. Peace, peace. This is DJ Olo coming to you live from Radio Fairfax here in Fairfax, VA. Today we're talking about collaborative commerce. And I, I guess what it means to you. I guess it's different to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's just start out. Like I was saying before, all right, so example was house building, right? So everyone got the idea. You need Everybody needs each other mm -hmm. to make it happen. It's not so much that you need each other. It just makes it easier. 
and it's uh, it's financially it's more efficient for everybody because everybody's making money, and there shouldn't be any any downtimes because we're all sharing jobs, right? And we don't have to pay somebody when there is no work, right? So you're saving money. Yeah, let me to go off your go your example, you know, that it costs money to keep someone on staff. But, you know, that kind of that's what starts the this whole capitalist society way of thinking where that big contractor has to like jock for jobs. He's trying to dominate the market. So he's constantly has have jobs and the smaller guy cannot get jobs because he's trying to get all he's trying to keep all the jobs to keep his people employed. Mm. And then at the end of the day, he does make more money doing that because he's he puts we call it a coefficient on top of everything else he marks up everything else so like if it was this guy who had his own you know electrician he was his own electrician you'll just get just have to pay straight him rather than paying him plus the markup by this big contractor i mean you see all right so i get what you're saying but collaborative commerce says all right if you're the electrician you got to give me a deal so mm-hmm. we have a contract. Exactly. So I, t- I was just about to ask about the contract. Is now when we move to the survival mode, do you still think we'll have contracts with people? All right. So let's all right, let's move into that part of it. Okay. Yeah. So what I was gonna get into is all right, so collaborative commerce, where it's moving to is simply with the with solar powered panels and solar powered energy coming into play so easily today and so it's so cheap it's like it's really cheap to do right now with that coming into play you can take yourself off the grid you don't have to have dominion power Mm -hmm. like we have here in fairfax or whatever power novak or whatever it is you know what i'm saying feed them (laughs) you can actually feed them you can start to actually reverse uh your, your little meter your electric meter it'll go backwards because now you're if you can get enough energy and store it for yourself um, the extra energy has to go somewhere so it gets pushed back to the power company. And the theory is, all right, so they have to pay you because you're giving them yeah, the power, but they're exactly. not going to. They're still going to charge you for well, being on the grid. No, it, it depends on where you're at. Um, well, okay, every, every, I'm talking every about right here. I'm state. talking about in Fairfax, though. Let's just talk about here. Okay, I, I get it. Like, I'm if you're in, in the Old Midwest. Town, so it's a little bit different. You know, they'll pay you. Oh, there's, in there's, Old Town there's they two do? different ways how they do it. One, I think, is like a stipend. Another one is like they'll pay you up to a certain amount. Okay, and it's and it's a certain uh, rate that's uh, associated with it. What I read is that they don't they don't pay you; they just don't charge you for usage, but you still get charged for the service and the connection. Mm-hmm. So you're still paying. So in order to be completely off grid, you've got to close out your account, and yeah. so any extra energy. So then that goes to when you start to store extra energy. Now this is this is where collaborative commerce comes into play because mm-hmm. if I have extra energy and and I, I have I don't have enough space to store it um, at home. I have to do something with this energy. So now what I could do is I can start a, a grid within my neighborhood, mm-hmm. within my community, and I can start to power my neighbor's house and my other neighbor's garage and my other neighbor's garden, or whatever, you know what I'm saying, his water pump. And that's where it becomes a collaborative thing. And what I can say is, all right, neighbor, I'll give you electricity, but you have to come wash my dishes and take care of my dogs and clean up their poop. You know what I'm saying? That's Would that's, you contract them? Say again? Would you contract them? Would oh you, yeah, you would contract. Yeah, them. I mean, it's still you still have to have a contract because if everything, if anything ever goes down, if you're giving them electricity for the whole month and they don't come through on their end, mm-hmm. uh, there has to be a way to uphold it. And the only way you can uphold, we're still in America. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you I can mean, live off grid, but you're still in America. How do you take them off grid, though? Well, say again. How how would you take them off grid? Uh, by supplying. Well, if I'm talking about off grid, off of the electrical grid. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. you're talking about going all the way. No, no, no. I'm talking about what you. I mean, when well, you yeah, put somebody, su- when you put somebody on with your solar power, are and you, you supply the electricity you to them. They default, huh? if they default yeah. the contract, mm-hmm. how you take them off? Yeah, how, solar. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to. Oh, have- you just cut the wire. I mean, you just. Oh. <laughs> It's just the switch. I just go, oh, and there's see, no more electricity you have going. A turn through. off valve. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I mean, you put. I didn't know if there was but, like a different way because it's solar power. Like, it's yeah, but see, okay, but like, the thing is, and it's coming from you, so you, so of course you would have to know how to put them on. So you would have. Yeah, to that's know what how I'm saying. I mean, it, obviously, be, but, if if I'm gonna give them electricity, I have to run a wire to their house, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So 
um, from the junction box from my house to their house, mm-hmm. there's got to be a switch. There's got to be an emergency switch anyways. Mm-hmm. So I would just turn it off. <laughs> I'd be the landlord, yo. I'd be like, yo, pay me. I'm no vac, son. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. I mean, that's, that's why it's collaborative commerce is because people are trying to move away from that way of thinking mm-hmm. where, okay, if they don't, you know, if they don't come through, then what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're so used to our power being cut off, right? But in the future, it goes back to what I was saying before. My cousin always says this, share and care, right? Yeah. It's the inner, it's the slogan of the, the new age, the, the young kids today. Uh, share and care. If you take, if you're looking out for your neighbor and, and they, if they're having hard times, obviously you should still help them out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you cut off their electricity, then they're going to have even worse times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that kind of takes away from the whole collab thing Mm -hmm. but i get what you're saying yeah if they don't come through then i mean yeah then you pick the wrong person to be a part of your your community you know what i'm saying um but again living off grid another part of that and another part of collaborative commerce is um is gonna be uh oh community tools right Mm -hmm. so if i have a lawnmower and you got a lawnmower and you got we're all neighbors and you got a lawnmower and you got a lawnmower we all spent 300 dollars each that's 1200 dollars for a lawnmower that we can all use together Right. Mm -hmm. So I can share my lawnmower and I'll be like, well, all I need from you is your weed whacker. Mm -hmm. And from you, I need your edger. You know what I'm saying? And from you, I need your garden hose. Right. And it just goes back and forth. And we just exchange. We all save money. We get more done. We probably do it all together. Mm -hmm. So it's going to look nicer. And our kids learn from it because our kids aren't so so standoffish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Collaborative, man. It works. I mean, in my opinion, it works in all ways. Obviously, if you have a neighbor, like you were saying, I never thought about that. If you got a neighbor that you just don't F with, you know what I'm saying? It just it, it just doesn't work. I mean, I guess you just got to yeah. leave them out the circle, man. Well, it's, it's, it's building that community. It's part of building yeah. that community. You're going to know who's next to you if you're building it, you know, from scratch. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you could try. You could, <laughs> you could be nice for a little bit and then see that, hmm. I mean, I tried, but that's how that's that's part is of today. Though. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I was gonna say that's you, just how it is, man. That's human nature, man. You gotta always, have good and bad, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You gotta find the balance. Yeah, yeah, you gotta find the balance. <laughs> and if it doesn't work out, like you know, I mean, the most simple thing is you just kick them out. But yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what they didn't know what they did back in the day. They mm-hmm. outcast yeah from yeah. their communities. Yeah, you know. So we tried. It, it, we're just you know going back. To that way things used to be then. Exactly. In that, in that case. And so I want to bring this all together because a lot of people that listen to this show are like, yo, I don't own a house. I don't care about houses. You know, we might be talking about, they don't care about living off grid. All they care about is music and how they can get their music to sell, right? And how they can just get on tours and how they can get shows and stuff like that. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'm going to come back and talk about that and how collaborative commerce actually runs the music industry as well. This is On Beat with Olo. We'll be right back. Peace. Fax's own freeform station. Peace, peace. This is DJ Olo. You're tuning into On Beat with Olo, coming to you live from WEBR Radio Fairfax here in Fairfax, VA. Today we're talking about something that's very important: collaborative commerce. It's missing. I I think it's missing in in a lot of people's lives. Um, growing up in the '90s, growing up on hip hop and growing up on hip hop culture, like we were talking about in the car. You said you don't understand it. You said, yeah, I really don't understand hip hop culture. And the thing, I guess I've always tried to be a part of hip hop culture. And when I was a kid, I used to really look up to a lot of rappers and producers and DJs. And I used to fantasize about uh, the life. You know what I'm saying? And growing up, you start to realize that the perception that you had as a kid is completely wrong. And that these dudes are living real lives. I met Jam Master J when I was 15 years old. I met him at a friend's house in an apartment and he was in the back room and I met him for about four minutes. And I remember how, like when I look back, I'm like, I was so stupid because I kept saying how I'm such a big fan and I grew up listening to Run DMC and I think he's the greatest and all this stuff. And when I think about it now, I'm like, yo, I could have had a, a, a deep conversation with this dude and asked him real questions, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But I was such like a, a rider. I was a little kid. And it was uh, it was crazy to me to be in the same room with somebody that I've seen on TV and music videos, at the Grammys, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He's mm-hmm. the one of the, the founding fathers of hip-hop. Um, 
And then a few years later, the poor guy died. And, uh, you know, that's it. I mean, I'll never be able to, to go back and talk to him and say, remember when I was a kid? And look where I am now, you know what I'm saying? And, and you helped me get there without even knowing, like, you know, he inspired me. But um, the thing about hip-hop culture is that there's a lot of fallacies, and I've talked about this before. A lot of kids coming up, not just hip-hop culture, but it's just, I think it's American pop culture, American popular culture uh, in all aspects. The rock, hip-hop, electro, whatever, whatever you're into. The mainstream. Yeah, whatever. I mean, even the underground. I mean, there's just a lot of fallacies. There's a lot of things that people believe are gonna come true or happen to them um and it's just not true it's really hard it's always like one in a million and that's that's real talk and there's a lot of chance involved and there's a lot of hard work that people aren't really uh willing to do that these other people who quote unquote make it actually do it's a lot of hard work um Anyways, man, the, what I was trying to get to is that a lot of people think that I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen for me. And I'm going to I'm gonna take my whole team with me. I'm going to make it happen. But they don't know how to make it happen. They don't know what they got to do to make it happen. They're not realistic about that. Not realistic at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's everyone just, a lot of people think that someone's going to come knocking on their door and say, yo, I heard your joint on SoundCloud or on oh, Reverb Nation. Or whatever. I saw that you got 100 likes on your post. And so I want to sign you. If they were even real. Takes groundwork. And it's really not like that at all. You know what I'm saying? It's really not like that at all. The, the guys who are really making it are the people who follow the rules of collaborative commerce. Mm, the that's artist true. that's working with the management team, that's working with the marketing team, yeah. that's working with, um, you know, this team, the promotion team, and this team that's the video team, and that team that's the recording engineers in that studio or whatever the clubs yeah the clubs Everybody. the radio djs it's these people who work together collab on on these projects yeah, they're the ones who are making it it's and at the end of the day it's about the good business as well you good know? business exactly looking out for each other nobody yeah. no one wants to help someone where they think it's going to be a threat to their own brand or, yeah you know it may hurt them in some other way where someone else may not want to work with them you Unless know. you were shady business. Yeah. I mean, there's more I mean, shady businesses than there are legit businesses. That's, you know very, very that's just real that's talk. Sad but the sad, the, it's true. And the reason that it's sad is because it's it's just, it's a lack of knowledge, man. It's sheer ignorance. A lot of people just jump into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's why, again, that's why I'm talking about collaborative commerce, man. Because it's very, to me, it's very important, man. Because we, I believe that. It's not even belief, man. I know, out of based out of experience, based on my own experience in life, I know now that we all uh, rely on another person to keep us all afloat. And then there's, like you're saying, there's a balance. Even the big, you know, like the big companies, man. Um, Wallfart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they have a lot of contracts with a lot of different people that mm. keep them afloat. Big names, and their big name helps other companies stay afloat, and it's a collab. You know what I'm saying? But it's all under one umbrella. They're pretty smart, man. Wallfart is one of the, the smartest right now. They're getting it in, man. I know people are, like to say I hate Wallfart and uh, they're taking away from small businesses and stuff. But you know what, man? Like you were saying, capitalism, that's the perfect example of what capitalism is. Wallfart mm -hmm. and the Wallfart yes, family. Is. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and But it's based off, of, again, it's based off collaborative commerce. Well, um, I, mean, I mean, from a certain aspect. You know, because it's like, I, for instance, for from my experience, I, I was in Afghanistan for a year and a half. And, like, I developed the first, we call it a MATOC contract. It's a multiple award task order contract where we'll get, I, I think what I had was, like, up to five contractors. And then what this is buildings, builders, right? And five people could win this contract, up to five people. And on that contract... If I have a job, I put it out to all five of them and I pick one of the five that could do it. And the reason why we pick five is one may get to at capacity. The best one may get at capacity, give them all projects he can't do anymore because he doesn't he doesn't have the capacity to do anymore. No more employees because they're all on all these other jobs. So we get to spread it across these five different contractors. And, and that was like the first time we did it in Afghanistan with Afghan contractors. And so that helped build, you know, collective commerce around these these Afghan contractors. So all five of them are going to get work and one of them won't get overworked because mm. once they get to their capacity, we're going to start 
boiling over to the other ones that may not have got as many contractors, you know, as, as many contracts. And then another example is with Afghans, they notice, okay, certain companies are getting most of the jobs. They have more capacity, this, that. They start build, making builders groups, whereas this this contract, this contract, and this contract came together as a as a um, as a partnership on, under one name. It's and like a went, joint venture. A joint venture, <laughs> and they started doing projects so they could do bigger projects rather than the little hundred thousand dollar project. They'll now they're able to do the three million dollar projects and make more money. And they're spreading. Well, they're supposed to spread it across their their collective joint venture, and and that's one way of doing it as well um some places like you said like wall fart or whatnot they may not be doing it in that manner it's not necessarily a joint venture it's more so like that first example i said with capitalism where it's they competitive got, they make well, people compete well it's not even competitive they they are the brand and everybody else has to get their meal from them you know what i mean oh, i feel you hmm. I, I know what you're saying yeah i mean now it is now obviously but what i meant to, i should have said this in the beginning when they were coming up the way they came to be well where well, they came to be yeah when they came to be it was a collaborative because they worked in the beginning they worked with local farmers they worked with lo- yep. local produce whatever you know vegetables and stuff um they worked with everybody local and then they blew up and they still use local stuff. They still mm-hmm. have organic. They still have local uh, eggs and local milk and produce and stuff like that. So in a sense, it still is a collaborative thing. But yeah, I mean, now they're huge. Yeah, I mean, now exactly. They, they everybody, went public. Now, yeah, now mean. everybody needs wall fart. They don't really need anybody. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they have to still respect because if another company does come through, um, there's and again, they're all like, they're usually smaller than they get big. But if another company comes through and makes them look bad, um, or makes them look like incompetent, um, like they made the K, the big K look. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Well, They'll take that business from them. Now- and see, another thing about Walfart, real quick. I don't want to cut yeah. you off, but Walfart, they take, they take a lot of big risks. Right now, I just found out that they're offering buyback, video game buybacks, right? And up until this point, the only person who ever did that was video game stores. But now you can go to Walfart. You can trade in your video game and you can use it on anything. You can buy oh. food with it. You can buy tires. You can buy whatever. You can buy a light bulb. You don't they have to. They give you a gift card? They, they give, give you, you like a, a gift, gift card. card, yeah. What? It used to be back in the day, you can only go to like an electronic. You just got one sold. Yeah, a, a video game <laughs> store, right? <laughs> I got video Do they games. buy it back at retail, full retail value? Or? They give you basically the same thing, maybe a few cents more than what the video game store would give you. But at the video well, game no. store, you can only use that credit for video games. But now. How's that really helping the economy now? If you think about that, it's not. It's not. They're, it's they're, not they're, I mean, you're taking over now. You won't have those little independent small game look, man, shops. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I yeah, get yeah. that, right? All I'm saying is that they're smart. Yo, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're just be shutting big. people down left and right. Yeah. You know, and and doing something like that, that that's risky. That's something. Doing something like that is very risky because it may or may not work. But it doesn't matter because it's gonna work for them. That's well, the you're thing. You're a multi-billion-dollar well, company. Do you? I you're mean, open 24 want, hours. 20, and you make money. I go in there at 2:30 in the morning a.m. because that's when I like to shop because there's no one else in there. Well, there is. There's still a line. There's still a line at two. That's what I'm saying. At two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I still have to wait in line. Yeah. So. And then think about the stoner <laughs> gamer kid. That's all hide up at three o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and he gets the munchies, mm-hmm. and he just beat the game, and he's done with it. <laughs> He, uh, the other the video game stores about to say their name the other video game stores aren't going to be open right so he goes right to wall fart he could be in, in the midwest like we were saying before he could be in west bubble f anywhere america go to the local 24-hour wall fart trade in his video game get food come home and pass out mm-hmm. and it's a wrap and he'll be happy and they make their money and he's happy and he's mm-hmm. going to do it again and suggest it to his friends and it's going to become like the local spot. Oh. And pretty soon, I was talking to him about this, they might start selling DJ equipment. You know what I'm saying? We might be able to buy these these microphones and this mixer from Walfart pretty soon. But there's a lot of people that they prefer the, if you're talking about big business, they prefer the independent. Like in the Bay Area in California, they got, yeah. you know, they have, you can buy CDs and all that stuff from Walmart. I mean, Walfart. 
But at the same time, there's a store called Rasputin where you go in there. It's all about the experience. You yeah, get exactly. Vinyl, you get turned. And they still have all that vinyl. Yeah, it has that underground type of feel. You remember as a kid, you used to go to Blondie's Pizza in Berkeley. Yeah. And then go to Rasputin, pick up like one or two vinyls, some rare stuff, and that's it. That's the appeal. It's that underground appeal. And that's there's there's a big there's a big um, indie subculture that yeah. follows that. But if you're thinking of the mass, the idiosa, the 85, whatever you want to call it, the, the sheeple, right? Yeah. The 99 percent. Whatever you want to call it, they're not gonna do that. You said sheeple. The sheeple, the right? Sheeple. <laughs> Isn't that what people say? <laughs> hey, I got look real quick. I got to take a quick break for PSAs. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer break for PSAs, and we'll be right back. We're talking about collaborative commerce. I'm sitting here with Jamal Bracy, Miss CC Vibes, and my little cousin Yama. We'll be right back. Peace. We're gonna stop saying the government. <laughs> stop saying what? The full government. Oh, I'm, <laughs> you got to tell me what you want me to say, man. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Peace. Keeping the First Amendment alive. Peace, peace. This is DJ Olo coming to you live from Radio Fairfax, here in Fairfax, VA. That's WEBR Radio Fairfax. Today we're talking about collaborative commerce. And um, we were supposed to have a full house, man. I don't know what happened to everybody. This is this is one of the reasons why it doesn't work. They're enjoying the weather. That's what they're doing. It is beautiful weather outside, but you know, it's nicer in here, man, because yeah. this will go forever. You know what I'm saying? This weather's going to change in two days. It's going to get real cold and it's going to rain. Guarantee it. We are imprinted. Exactly, man. That's what it's all about. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Collaborative commerce. Um, you were about to go in, Miss CC Vobs. Um, I wanted to know, like, collaborative commerce. Like, if I have a electric company, and then that electric company branches off and has another little company that now sells electricity for a cheaper price, and then you, you are that separate little company, right? So you can charge people way less than other companies. You can take their bill and change it 15% or 3%, 15% less. I'm making money and then you're saving on your bill, but it's the same big company that has the electricity. Yeah. So I'm making money and everybody that comes under me is gonna make money. So it's kind of but like essentially a, the umbrella company, the mother company, mm-hmm. is the one that's making all the money. Uh huh. And so that's called a uh, monopoly. Okay. Or a but, franchise. Well, yeah, but see, a monopoly, they can't monopolize like that. It's illegal. They passed laws that said they can't monopolize like that. Because AT and T tried to do that. They tried to take over all the um, telephone companies, mm-hmm. right? Um, power companies tried to do that. Mm-hmm. One big one bought up everyone. They, I mean. Uh, Viacom that runs most of the commercial mm-hmm. uh, networks and stuff. They own a lot of them. Um, and that's that's a monopoly. And they do that. And yes, they do it. And the way they hide it now is, like you said, they have a mother company mm-hmm. and then they umbrella it out and they make smaller companies. Mm-hmm. And they'll put it in different people's names. Yeah. Or whatever. They'll put it however they, they put it. They make you have your own business. Exactly. They, you yeah. have your own LLC, your own business in yeah. your name, but you're still under them. A mother company. A mother and, company. And they're actually, with each smaller entity that they create, uh-huh. they're building a level of protection for like themselves. A pyramid. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's like exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's all. Yeah. And then the all seeing eye, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever is going to be the mother company, the, the mm-hmm. top of the umbrella, the point. So that's exactly what it is, and that's how it works. And that's that's it starts. I mean, if you really think about it, it really starts from the thirteen families. It starts from the the richest bankers in the world, and it trickles down, right? Do it's, you think it's effective? Do you think it's? It do doesn't matter if it's good. effective or not. Do you think it's, it's something good that is could be profitable profitable for your community? If are you asking me personally, yeah. if you want my personal opinion, no, okay. I say no. This all is. Right. This is all, I'm not going to say it's wrong, uh-huh. but it's not good. Okay. Because yeah. it's, this is the opposite of what we're really supposed to be here for. And that's my personal opinion. And, I don't and, care what other people have to say. I agree because in that, that means. Well, someone, let me finish though. Hold on, hold on. But the okay, thing is, hold on. But look, the thing is saying that mm-hmm. this life that we live here and, and, and the way it is right now, it's, it's not for me to say I'm going to change it or anyone else is going to change it. Mm-hmm. So while we're here. I say get into it and do it as much as you can. Make as much money as you can. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's my advice to myself. You know what I'm saying? Do whatever you can to make this 
life, this material life, worth it? Because when this material life is over, there's not going to be another. And the life that's waiting after this material life uh, has, it, it, none of this will affect that. No. And that's just my personal, you know what I'm saying? Uh, whether people believe in a higher being and a higher God and a higher energy, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. if you really break it down, if you break us down as as um, as just an organisms, essence. yeah, an no, not even an essence, just take all the spiritual stuff away. Okay. If you just break us down to a biological organism, mm-hmm. right? Our only reason to be on earth is to live and to reproduce, to keep it going and to keep the earth alive. But everything that's revolved around capitalism and making money mm-hmm. and even the feelings of I have to make money and keep it away from everybody else. It's a greedy feeling. You know what I'm saying? Even if you want to be a good person, it's still a greedy feeling to have a lot of money and know that your neighbor might not have mm-hmm. what you have. You know what I'm saying? But the capitalistic way of thinking is that's that's his problem. He's got to do what he has to do for himself. That's the American way. And that's just real talk. And that's just what it is. But that doesn't make it right. That's all I'm trying to say. Because me as an organism, if my fellow man needs help it's my duty as a as as a living being to help him mm-hmm. as it is i mean i know people are like well you know a bear is not going to help another bear right and but i get that but you know what a bear will help another bear if they're part of the same pack an elephant will help, an- help another elephant exactly if a they're wolf part of the same pack another wolf yeah they have to because they know it goes back to collaborative commerce all that stuff a wolf like you said a wolf they go in a pack and they work together to, to find their prey and take down their prey. They don't just go crazy, start running around all of North America and just start eating everything. Mm-hmm. They work as a group. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it works for them. The reason it's not working so much today is because of humans. Because we've cut off their migration patterns. We've cut off their food supplies. We've cut off, you know, so many natural resources that allowed them to live uh, thousands of years before man even came to North America. Um... But that's just my personal thing. I don't want to get too deep into it because mm-hmm. people are going to start turning the show off and I'm going to lose a lot of uh, listeners. I don't want to get too deep into all that. Well, but yeah, that's my personal thing. What, my what fault, I was going to say is that that way, uh, uh-huh. that structure, it puts one person, it gives one person too much power where it keeps everyone, you could keep everyone at their level. Yeah. You know what I mean, rather than, okay, if he, that person ends up being more talented, they could, you know, they may be a better leader for that company, so let them grow a little more. It, a pyramid keeps everybody on that on their level. Exactly. You know? and, and you know, for society, that's not good because you need you need there might be someone else with more talent or that may have a better idea and need a chance to be heard. Mm-hmm. And you can't be heard in, in a pyramid. The thing about a pyramid system is that the person on top is always on top, or at least his family is, even if he dies. His family's always on top, and everyone else, like you said, you could you have this um, this feeling of I can move up the corporate ladder, mm-hmm. and you can move up the corporate ladder, but the thing is, the person on, on the top can always kick you back down, and, and you have to start from the beginning again. And mm-hmm. they're always getting bigger, and they're getting bigger. Yeah, yeah exactly. As you get bigger, they're because you're building yeah. it for them. That's the thing. Yeah. That's that's the whole thing about pyramids and how the pharaohs had the slaves build it for them, and the whole the whole idea that they put in our head that slaves built the pyramids for them and they made them and this and that and and the whole thing is that they've always put it in our heads that we have to build them up to be what they're supposed to be what their god-given right is to be but that's not true our, every every single human being on this planet has the same god-given right the same natural law applies to all men so when we built when we built this entity when we accepted this entity of commerce which is not a bad thing because it can be u- it could be used in a good way. It can be used properly. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of religions talk about it. Islam talks about commerce. Islam came up with commercial laws that still apply today in America. Contracts, treaties, these types of things. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, these are this is all part of commerce, and it's uh, it, again it can be used in the right way. It can be used properly, but it's not. It's just that simple. We're not. You know, we don't we don't do anything good with money for real. 
all the good things that are happening in this world are like non-profit charities people doing it out of, because they feel they should yeah there's no there's nothing <laughs> commercially being done to help this planet earth it's, nothing and some of that is commercial as well and yeah a lot of it's commercial yeah obviously going green and all that kind of stuff come on well, man that's I a mean, joke in, in the charity things as well because some people use that for their whole promotional oh my means. gosh there's new yeah. barbie dolls in the toy store they're cancer little nothing against anybody with cancer i love everyone out there they got the little pink ribbon they got the ribbon and they're bald headed little dolls like i can understand to a certain point but they're bald headed barbies they're bald headed barbies and they have little ribbons that's a little scary what what the thing is they're making it they're making it like it the norm like it's yeah like it's okay like it's it's the normal thing to have cancer it's the normal thing to just be sick all the time it's normal well, that's, I don't. I mean, that's that's. I mean, thing. it is, it is it, normal. it's <laughs> normal to a point, but it do, you don't need to buy it. You shouldn't yeah. have to buy it. Like, I don't, I don't think that's a good product to, uh, you know. I think they're just trying to get the kids to get familiar with that and stuff like that. But I don't think that's the right way to do that. I mean, get, get familiar and, with it. You can get familiar with any yeah. disease. Yeah. Like, and put it on a doll, but you're gonna make money that off of it. Weird, that's though. that's millions of dollars getting at contributed. Least money. To at least put it. All the profit that comes from a dollar. In, into All right, I'm going to talk about that too. You Let know. me take a quick $1. break. I'm going to take a quick break. This is on beat with Olo. We're talking about a lot of things. We're talking about bald headed Barbies now. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew about it's that. Great. I just saw it today. I was just like, wow. I can only Did imagine it. Because it had a, it yeah, it's had, crazy. I thought it had an MS ribbon in it. No, it was, it was a, another ribbon. We'll be right back. <laughs> Peace. Keeping the First Amendment alive. We are WEBR, Fairfax County's cable access and internet radio station. Peace, peace. This is DJ Olo coming to you live. You're tuned in to On Beat with Olo here in Fairfax, VA. We're talking about collaborative commerce. And uh, we just went into the break talking about bald-headed Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's ridiculous how people make so much money off of illnesses and made so much money off of just just negative okay look I just think it's negative I'm gonna take it back to music real quick and hip hop cause okay. you're talking about people making money off negative people making money off illness right yeah and now one of the illnesses that some of us grew up with is the illness of being stuck in a hood mm-hmm. in what some people consider a ghetto right mm-hmm. or just the projects or whatever it may be Now, when you're stuck in a situation that you can't get out of, it becomes an illness because some people will die to get out of there. They'll do anything to get out and and create a quote unquote better life for themselves. Mm -hmm. But there's others who become consumed in that life and they can't leave. They call it a trap. It's a trap. That's when they call it a trap. Exactly. It's the trap, right? Because they're brainwashed. Brainwashed. And part of the brainwash is in the music. Mm -hmm. Now, I grew up on a lot of positive, strong Hip hop, a lot of, and not just hip hop. I mean, there was a lot of music I grew up on that mm-hmm. was strong and positive. And these were, you know, big, big artists. Man, Bob Marley is one of them. You know what I'm saying? One of the most influential artists in my life, Bob Marley. Shoot, of all time. Of yeah, in in the world, exactly. That's what I'm saying. But um, he was never pushed uh, to the masses because his 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 message is so positive and uplifting, and it gave power to the people. And it seems to me that in history, people who place power back into the hands of the mass are the ones who are either assassinated or have their character assassinated, right? Their character mostly. Whoa. I wonder I wonder what they say about Pharrell Williams now. Because if you think about his music now, it is very uplifting and it has good, good vibes to it. So, But a lot of people say that he's... He's he's not he's from the he's from the seven five seven he's from where I'm from that is there is hood out there like it is there are a lot of people live in the trap mind frame mm. I, as soon as I could get out when, at eighteen years old I left I made that move because I was like I am not living in the trap no more I am living in Northern Virginia it's not that far away but that money is there and I know I can make a better me there there's better schools there's better schools for my babies there's better there's better men with actual good jobs like there's that down there too but it's hard to find and when you live in that society 24 7 and it's constantly on you and you can't make any money to move out i had my family so i was able to move thank god but 
a lot of those people don't have that. All their family still lives there. So they have that trap mind frame. And I pray that people move forward. But the yeah, no. What yeah, I was trying yeah. to get into, no. But I mean, so that trap mind, <laughs> that trap mind. Got me in my emotions. That was very deep, right? Yeah. <laughs> in my emotions. That was, that was. I wanted you to get it all out, man. <laughs> um, Pharrell right Williams. There. No, but what I was trying to say is that trap mind. Yeah. That trap mind. Come, me and Jamal talk about this all mm-hmm. the time. It comes a lot of it. The influences come from music, mm-hmm. or pop culture, or movies. Mm-hmm. Or well, them promoting well, the, those the hood. things. They're promoting those things in the hood. That's what I'm saying. Bang, bang, it's cool and, and, to be and, yeah. hood. And yeah, it's, way it's cool. More there. Yeah, you got, you, there's so much more there yeah. than just that. But that's just what they they decide they want to push as to be the cool. You know what I mean? The cool thing like, for kids, for teenagers too, because they know they can feed on teenagers. I remember hmm. um, being. I forgot where I was. I was in a store. It might have been Walford. I don't even know where it was. But I remember hearing two little kids who were probably like 11, 12, 13 years old. Uh, they were doing something. They were like, that's so ghetto. It's cool. That's exactly what they said. It's so ghetto. And then he paused and said, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking to myself, like, when I was a kid, when I thought of the ghetto, I thought of like, you know, like Harlem. You know what I'm saying? I thought of parts of New York. I used to live in Queens for a little while. Right. And it wasn't. I lived in Flushing, Queens, and it wasn't like the hood, hood. Mm. Maybe it was. I just didn't know I was a kid. But I remember seeing some hood things in New York. You know what I'm saying? I remember going to um, the South Bronx and it being like really rough. I remember going to East Harlem and it was really rough. Um, And I seen hoods like that. You know, I remember going to the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? To Oakland? To To Oakland, yeah. And it being like real hood, driving by Compton. You know what I'm saying? And being real hood, like... I got that part Nobody of it. Nobody wants to live there. And that's what I'm saying is the people wanted to get out. But these little suburban kids that have mm-hmm. nice houses and their parents have two cars and they got like, uh, you know, they got funds set up for themselves. They go to nice schools, all that stuff. Yeah. They want to be. That's the thing is they. Why? I never knew what want to be was. People used to be like, oh, he's a want to be. Mm-hmm. I never knew what it really meant. But now I get it. They want to be something mm-hmm. that they see on TV. Mr. Me too. And so it's come so far to the point that the people who are actually in this trap are starting to believe that it's cool to be a part of that because people want to be like them. And that's the thing is that it it's a joke, man, because really... When it comes down to it, when these kids grow up and they go to their schools and that person who's stuck in the trap is still in that trap, that kid's not going to want to be like that no more. That kid that is part of the fraternity and goes to this good school and I was, you know, listening to hip hop and Eminem and doing the whole nine. All of a sudden, when he's 25, he's still going to get a good job. You know what I'm saying? He's still going to be able to go put a down payment on a house. While this person who's 25, 26, 30 is still stuck paying rent in a roach infested apartment. With, with a driving a Mercedes or something. Maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Not even mean, all of oh, them. You know what I'm saying? Personal story. I mean, I'm no. just saying. <laughs> you see that as well, but I think it's not only that. At least kids a Hyundai. that are in <laughs> the Hyundai, quote unquote yeah. hood, uh, they don't want to. It's because someone thinks it's cool, so now they that's, they don't want to get out. I mean, it's it's that that's all they're seeing. Before, you used to see more things. You used, that's what I'm a saying. Kid, a kid in the hood used to see, okay, uh, um, a person from the hood, okay, move to the east side. You know, they had those shows up, I'm moving to the east yeah. side. But you don't see those things now. Everything is all geared towards, okay, we going in the hood. Are we, you know, what I mean that that type of thing. They're not they they're not even exposed to anything more than what they they're already seeing in their current life. They're also seeing it on TV. So how are they going to know if there's anything more to get? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You 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 have to. I mean, it has to be real to you to know that to really want it. You know, and and that's the difference between someone like me, who I had someone to show me more. You know, I had an uncle that moved out and went to the land, and I've seen more. And I don't know. I'm around some of the same guys that I, when I go back home, that's on, that's still on the block. You know what I mean? Going to the liquor store before the sun go down. Yeah. And then this is some of them is fans, but they didn't, they didn't have that uncle that brought brought them out to be exposed to more. Yeah. That's, that's all they seen was what they seen, and then they on TV showing the same thing. So I got a question for you now, right? I hear that a lot in a lot of minorities, right? Black people, Latin people, Afghan people, Asian people, a lot of different people. I hear how when a man leaves, 
the kids are pretty much doomed to grow up by themselves and nobody really cares, right? And whatever happens, happens. But you'll notice that in a lot of, no disrespect, but in a lot of American um, white communities, they say, oh, you know, Tommy, he's not doing good. Well, we got to go save him. We got to go help him out, whether it's through religious church or whatever, right? And I notice in a lot of other uh, cultures, they don't really do that, especially in America. They don't do that. They don't help each other because they feel like they're part of this rat race and everyone's for themselves. And I notice in my family, a lot of times they're like, oh, you know, this guy's not doing too good. Your cousin's not doing too good right now. He's all messed up. Too bad for him. And I'm like, well, what can we do to help him out? Man, nothing. You just got to let him work it out. You know, you just got to deal with it. So is that is that part of the conditioning, the capitalistic conditioning? Is that, I mean, is that something that's, hmm. is that something that's, um, is that a cultural thing? I believe so. I don't so. think it is. I, I oh, believe, you think I it believe, is a no, cultural no, thing? No, not a cultural thing, but I believe it's part of the whole, that capitalism mind frame, that whole influence. Of everyone's out for themselves, yeah. survival where, of the fittest. Where, falling back to what we're, our topic, if it's collaborative, you want that, you want to pick that person up because actually all it does is help the group. Yeah. Because they actually might have a skill that you need that you don't even know they have until you actually reach out and you help them. And they'd be like, oh, well, I know how to do this and I can help you do this. And oh, so we can help each other do this together. And then you've actually made a new friend. You made somebody that can I hear what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that it just doesn't happen. I don't see it happening. Hmm. Well, And, and that's part of the problem, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so we need to find a solution. We need, I believe that we need a solution for that. Because just like you said, these men, these young men that are growing up without fathers or without uh, any type of male figures or male guidance in their life. um, And I can speak on this because this happened to me, man. You know, my uncle Donnie, man, shouts out to Don, man. He's he's like my dad. You know, um, Lala, my uncle Akbar, he's like my dad. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather was like my dad because my dad chose not to be around. Uh, no disrespect to my dad. I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, he took that coward route. You know what I'm saying? And it messed me up growing up because I missed out on a lot of things. But I, I was lucky to have Uncle Donnie, mm-hmm. which is an Italian man that married into our Afghan family. Mm-hmm. That, and he didn't have to do a damn thing to help me out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially in the 80s, in the yeah. late 70s, early 80s. He didn't have to do a damn thing to help me out. But I can't, I, I thought about this other day. I was, I was looking at my son and I was thinking about what it, it takes to be a father because I'm like, man, I just don't have it in me yet. You know what I'm saying? I hope to be as good a dad as a lot of these men in this world. And I started thinking about my uncle, Don, who's not even my real father, never ever once said to me, you know, you're, you're my nephew. You're not my son. You're not even, you know what I'm saying? He always, he always said, you're my first son. And then his f- actual first biological son, mm-hmm. he would always say is his second son. I'm talking about Kais. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? I know. So I never thought about it then, but thinking about it now as a grown man, that's that's a lot of power. There's a lot of power in those those little words right there. You know what I'm saying? That he made me one of his. And and now that I know um, the things that I know, that he's not our blood and um, that he's, you know, he, he, he didn't have to do these things, man. That's empowerment right there. And there's not enough people doing that. So, yeah, you're right. We're lucky, man. But there's a lot of men out there who aren't lucky. Uh, they aren't lucky enough to have somebody there. I got to take a quick break. And then we're going to come back for the last segment, do our shout outs, and we'll be out. This is On Beat with Olo coming to you live from Radio Fairfax. That's WEBR Radio Fairfax. I need some water, man. We'll be right back. Peace. Fighting Radio Pablum in the No Guts Washington radio market. We're WEBR, Fairfax's cable access radio station. Peace, peace. You tune into On Beat with Olo coming to you live from Radio Fairfax. That's WEBR Radio Fairfax here in Fairfax, VA. I'm sitting here with cousin CC Vibes. And I'm going to just call you Ghost from now on, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. I'm going to call you the Black Casper. Hey, I'll just call you Brace Face. Brace Face? Brace What's that? Brace Face. I used to call him Brace. When I first met you, I used to call you Brace Face. Because mm. his I last name all- is Bracy. Oh. So I used to call him yeah. Brace Face. I was I like, first thing I pictured was, I was just thinking, Brace Face. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when he was a kid, me and uh, my little cousin Kais used to call him Brace Face. Undercover, I don't think he even knew about it. He just found out now on beat. <laughs> I told you I was gonna drop a bomb. Yeah, man. They they always um they're practical jokers. Practical that's, jokers. That's, that's all they do, man. They're yeah. impractical jokers. <laughs> that's the thing, man. But 
Now I'm here with uh, with Jamal, CC Vibes, and Cousin Yama. We're talking about collaborative commerce, and I, I was trying to keep it all within um, the realms of the music industry and the entertainment industry. Um, I didn't get to talk about a lot of things, man. The internet, that's the, the internet was like the the reason for collaborative commerce today. It made it so easy because mm-hmm. you can hook up with all these different people on the internet. Anyone at any time, 24-7. Exactly, all over the world. 365. And, and in music as well. In music, yeah, in all the yeah. arts and entertainment. I That's got, so awesome. I got a little so cousin awesome. who's getting into uh, production, and he'll talk to a guy in Europe somewhere and do that screen saving to, to learn how to do something yeah. in Fruity Loops. You know? Exactly. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Think about that, man. That's you so know awesome. what I'm saying? The world is getting smaller and smaller. Cousin, let's start yeah. with you, man. Any last words, man? Uh, collaborative thing, commerce. Collaborative commerce is, um, I think, basically, it just depends on where you are. When I was growing up in Virginia and California at the same time, it's very different. You stay in up on California, the mic, California, L.A., Bay Area, a lot more creative, a lot more social. They all come together. Everybody has their own personality. Virginia, I, I went to Lake Braddock. I was a little art, artsy indie kid. I wanted to start a band. I didn't have anybody to start a band with. Everybody was just into the mainstream. They were into Eminem and all that. At that time, and I wanted to be like the Strokes and and the little like Radiohead and all those bands that were out there. I couldn't find anybody, so I went kind of crazy. Then I went into California, it was much easier because everybody mm-hmm. is more in tune out there with, they have uh, more of a voice. And that's one thing I think is missing in Virginia, always, is that they're still catching up. Beat Conductors is on the right direction in that you're connecting the community together, but at the same time, people are looking for that inspiration. And it has to be real inspiration, it has to be real talent coming together and believing in each other, you know what I mean? Not half-assing it, not doing anything, you know, just for fun, just for a party, but really believing, you know, like like this girl, for example, she has big dreams, she wants to be on top of the world, who's gonna work with her, who's nearby? If she lives in Fairfax, who's in Fairfax? Who has a studio, who can promote her, has to be everything local that believes in her, doesn't want to take advantage of her, stuff like that. These are all the things in the music industry, if you're a woman, that you gotta watch out for. Mm. But, you know, if she has the package, if she has the talent, the devotion, the drive, and if she collaborates with the right people, you know, the sky is the limit. I don't care if there's big EMI, all these big record labels. If she got talent, she can take over. And then you can reach a plateau. There's bands like Radiohead, for example. They basically built such a brand name that they're like, you know what? We don't need you guys anymore. We're just going to directly distribute our album from a website to our fans. And we'll throw our own concerts. And that's it. You know, their career actually got even better now. They're more legendary because the Nine Inch Nails, Depeche Mode, all these big legends, that's the power that you want to have right there. That's the, the plateau right there. That's what's up, man. That's yeah. some good and powerful last words, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, on that note, Miss CC Vibes, man, if people wanted to find you online, if um, they wanted to collab with you, how can they find you? You, you can find me on Facebook, Christine Tebazile. It's T-E-B-A-Z-I-L-E. Or you can find me... Um, yeah, you can find me on Facebook because <laughs> I took everything else down. Um, love, love your neighbor. Be generous and kind. Live your life in kindness because if you're kind, if you live your days in kindness, then you'll be kind to the person next to you and that will spread and then it'll keep spreading and keep spreading. And the more love is shared, the more love is it grows. That's what's up, man. Uh, on that note, I got to get out because our time is completely up. This is on beat. We'll be out. Peace.